Hi, this Hi. is Phil Diadamo Damri from the Appalachian Free Chip Project, and uh, I am here to welcome you to um, our webinar series and to today's presentation. Um, today, our presenter is Betsy Ritchie, and she will be talking about her work with Cultivate Iowa. And I will let her do more of an introduction um, and won't spend much time here uh, getting things going. But um, uh, the the Appalachian Future Project webinar series um, is something that's been ongoing for the past couple of years, and you can um, find more information at AppalachianFoodShipProject.org. Um, this webinar will be recorded today, and it will be archived and available um, on that website uh, in the next few days. So um, without further ado, I'll let Betsy take over, and um, we will, I guess at the logistics point, we will... Uh, Betsy will present, and then we'll try and save questions for the end. So if you have questions, type them into the chat box, and then, and then um, um, we will, we will she'll respond to them at the end. Um, but if you have a clarifying question that you would like, you would like to have answered immediately, or, or, um, um, you can also send those, and we'll, and we'll uh, try and sort through those as well. Do those as well. Thanks. Thanks. And here's Betsy. Here's Betsy. Great. Thanks, Phil. Um, as you said, I'm Betsy Ritchie. I'm the co-convener of the Food Access and Health Work Group um, as part of the Iowa Food Systems Council. And today I'm going to be talking about Cultivate Iowa, which is a social marketing campaign that we have been facilitating to encourage food gardening. Um, myself and Angie Tagto were the developers of this campaign, and we launched it in 2013. Angie Tagto, um, is currently the executive director for the Center for Nutrition and Policy Promotion at the USDA. And prior to that, she was um, an independent contractor as well as a facilitator of FOG with me here in Iowa. Um, the Food Access and Health Work Group is a community of practice in Iowa that's a statewide network focusing on cultivating a diverse and just food system that eliminates hunger and increases access to nutritious, nutritious food and advances the health of all Iowans. It's a very diverse group and we have a lot of different stakeholders. We have about 600 partners that are active within our listserv and they it pulls together both large and small organizations from a variety of areas um, including WIC, food banks, um, education, healthcare, small nonprofits, um, pretty much anyone who's interested in food access and health issues from a variety of perspectives, including um, food security, food waste, gardening, um, food policy, um, community planning, lots of different perspectives, public health. Um, and this group has been together since about 2010, and since then we've taken on projects to help support our partners in the work that they do. But really we see our role as a convener where we pull together diverse stakeholders to help with them with networking and help them build the projects within their communities and have support from a statewide organization as well. One of the main projects that we've been working on in the last couple of years is focusing on food gardening. I think everyone knows the benefits of food gardening, that it improves food security, it um, increases physical activity, it's been shown to support mental health, family bonds, um, to create food sustainability, it's been used in schools as well as within communities to build curriculum and engagement, um, and it also supports conservation and biodiversity which although somewhat outside of our realm with food access and health, we do try to support conservation and biodiversity in all of the work that we do as a food access and health community of practice. So to support gardening within the state of Iowa, we started a social marketing campaign. And social marketing seeks to influence social behaviors, um, not to benefit marketers, but to benefit a target audience or a larger society. The primary focus is on the consumer and learning what people want rather than trying to persuade them to buy something, but it uses marketing principles to encourage behavior change or to encourage perspective change. Um, and it's focused on research-based method messaging. So initial assessment is used to develop materials, um, marketing strategies are used to implement, and then more research is used to evaluate and tweak, adapt the campaign to make it more effective as a continual iterative process. 
So our process with the Food Gardening Social Marketing Initiative here in Iowa, we started with concept and funding. So we received about $130,000 in a two-year grant from the Walmart Foundation to support this project. Um, and we developed a concept because focusing on gardening because of its ability to impact food security, as well as it being kind of an up-and-coming topic among our partners that our partners felt that they were interested in and um, wanted to engage more with. The next step was to do an assessment of Iowans in general, of gardeners, of our partners, of lots of different stakeholders to understand how messaging can be used to support gardening in Iowa. Then we developed and tested messaging and we launched the campaign in 2013. After the campaign implementation, we evaluated the campaign again and with our partners, with Low Resource Iowans, with gardeners, with all of the different stakeholders that we wanted to target to relaunch the campaign in 2014 and understand what worked, what didn't work, and how we can make it an even more effective campaign as we move forward. In our assessments, we used a social ecological model, which brings together multiple layers between individuals, households, organizations, communities, and public policy to impact food gardening and understand how it um, is related to food access and security, health, economic issues, and the environment, and social issues. So we wanted to triangulate all of these different levels to really understand in a holistic perspective how food gardening sits within food security in Iowa. Um, based on this type of model, we did a literature review of current gardening um, research, and that developed into the Growing Solutions document, which can be found on the Iowa Food Systems Council website. Um, if you're interested, it's, down, it's a downloadable PDF, and you can just Google it with Iowa Food Systems Council. With our assessment, we really felt that it was important to engage all of the key stakeholders that we identified within this project. So we had FOG partners, um, who we interviewed with some qualitative survey um, at a FOG gathering as well as in, a, in an online module. And our goal was to assess partners' organizations' experiences with food gardening and produce donation activities, their support of this project, as well as any lessons learned that they had within any activities they've done in the past related to gardening. We then um, did focus groups with food pantries, and we partnered with the Iowa Food Bank Association to help facilitate these. And the goal of these um, focus groups was to produce, um, was to investigate produce acceptance and donation practices, food banks' ability to provide nutrition education and promotion messages, and any challenges to messages and produce donation and distribution. We then interviewed low resource Iowans through a semi quantitative survey. And with this survey, we partnered with nine organizations who are engaged in the Food Access and Health Work Group, including WIC, Iowa Workforce Development, several large food banks, area agencies on aging, and other organizations that really work closely with low-resource Iowans. With this survey, we wanted to assess knowledge, attitudes, and practices related to food gardening and produce consumption among this population to really understand what messages are going to be effective and what challenges they see to gardening and eating healthy. And finally, we did a survey, an online survey with food gardeners where we partnered with the Iowa State University Extension and Outreach Master Gardeners Program to reach gardeners. Our goal was to understand current produce donation and gardening activities as well as perceived challenges to produce donation within communities. And once we did all of these separate assessments, we pulled them all together to really understand from a holistic perspective what the key themes and issues were related to food gardening in Iowa and how a marketing campaign could be used to address these. So our first piece was with food gardeners, or with fog partners. Um, and 74% were currently participating in some sort of gardening activity. Um, this showed that they did have experience and recognized the benefits of gardening, and participate was very, very broadly defined. This could be supporting another organization, it could be providing funding or resources for gardens, it could be doing a garden themselves, it could be accepting um, garden produce as a pass-through to other organizations, um, so lots of different ways that they participated in gardening activities. The main challenges identified were, I think, common to every 
piece of work that our partners do is that there was a lack of staff and volunteer time as well as budget to um, increase or start gardening activities. We asked partners then what they needed to support gardening activities within their organizations. And the main things that were identified were outreach, recruiting, basic gardening information, and collaboration with other organizations. Um, and all of these ideas really are in line with social marketing and can, um, marketing ideas can be used to support these. When we looked at produce donation, there was really more of a lack of awareness about um, donating produce to food pantries and other emergency feeding networks. Um, about half were engaged in some sort of produce donation activity, so much less than actual gardening activities. Um, barriers were lack of informational resources and lack of knowledge of produce donation opportunities. Um, and things that would help them were advocacy, information about donation, and encouraging messages that would help agencies to expand produce donation activities. There was also a need to make community connections between gardeners and food pantries, so there was seen to be a disconnect between these two parties. All of our partners really were positive about produce donation and about gardening. Um, so really the potential was there to expand produce donation and gardening within Iowa. And we really saw that there was a need to get the ball rolling. Um, that it showed an opportunity for social marketing about food gardening and educational and messaging resources were needed. That there was this lack of awareness that we needed to expand, especially around produce donation. One of my favorite quotes that we got from this survey was the last one on this slide that says, zucchini is a gateway drug to donation. Once you get growers hooked on how good donating feels, they will find other produce to share as well. So it's really finding that hook, finding that community connection, getting people engaged, and then the ball will kind of roll on its own. With the food pantry staff and volunteers, we did focus groups with 30 different emergency food providers. One of the key things that came up again and again was knowledge was seen as a barrier to healthy food consumption. And that healthy eating messages were a major need within the emergency feeding network. And there was specifically a lack of knowledge about food gardening. Um, in later conversations in the focus groups, knowledge kind of came up again, but the idea that there was a lack of knowledge regarding healthy food consumption wasn't necessarily supported because partners also said that fresh produce, produce was a hot commodity at pantries and that clients really wanted it. It was the first thing to go. So client behavior really shows that maybe there isn't a lack of knowledge regarding healthy food consumption. Maybe it is more of a lack of knowledge around food gardening itself. Um, Within the Low Resource Island survey, we found that half of all clients don't use the produce that they get from a food pantry, however. So really, um, messages about food saving may be appropriate as well. All the food pantries that we engaged in this assessment except for fresh produce when available, and we're really very positive about having fresh produce and being able to distribute it. Unfortunately, most produce is only available a few months of each the year and other fruits and vegetables that came to the pantry were, may not be as healthy, especially those that are canned, that can't contain high sodium, many preservatives, um, possibly added sugar, etc. cetera. Uh, they accepted produce from a variety of resources, including restaurants, retail, farmers markets, community gardens, as well as um, private gardeners. Um, but they did receive minimal donations of plants and seeds. So they really didn't support gardening, but they helped to support produce consumption. One of the things that came up again and again in these focus groups was that they had concerns about providing healthy eating messages within pantries and banks when there was a lack of fresh and healthy foods available. So produce donation really will help support food pantries in their other functions in providing healthy eating messages. All the food pantries reported very positive responses from clients regarding fresh produce. Um, but they did see a lot of challenges to distributing that produce as well. Um, for example, many pantries are very small and they're only open a couple days of a week. 
So it can be difficult for them to accept fresh produce since it doesn't stay good very long. And if produce donation happens on the day that they're not open, it may spoil. In addition, many pantries don't have commercial refrigerators, so they don't have a way to extend the life of the produce. But again, they felt like it was a very promising practice and that it was needed within their pantries. Um, as one person reported, it never gets left behind, and that's very promising. Families definitely want it. And food pantries definitely want to give their clients what they want, especially when it's healthy. With our survey with Low Resource Iowans, as I said, we partnered with nine agencies within the state, and we interviewed almost 1,000 Low Resource Iowans. Uh, we found that one in six are food insecure, and that's supported by other research done elsewhere in the state. Uh, we found that younger respondents were more likely to worry about not being able to pay household bills. Um, almost 80% of 18 to 29-year-olds worried about paying household bills, so there definitely is um, economic challenges within these households. About one in four reported getting food from a food pantry, and 60% used WIC or other food assistance to purchase fresh fruits and vegetables. Among food pantry users, 77% of those who didn't receive fresh produce would like to. So people want it, that fresh produce. It supports the focus groups that we did with the food pantry staff. Um, and half of who, those who get fresh produce eat all of it. Next, we asked about produce consumption patterns. And we asked two questions. Do you eat enough fruits and vegetables? So this is the perception of their produce consumption. And then we also asked, does your diet consist of half fruits and vegetables? So this was a very, very, very rough estimate of if um, low-resource ions are following the MyPlate recommendations that half the diet should consist of fresh fruits and vegetables. And although perceived produce consumption was relatively high, direct food consumption data from other, resource, or other research um, does indicate that it is much lower than what they, they are reporting. However, um, those who perceive themselves eating enough fruits and vegetables does vary by education, where interestingly, people with less education are more likely to feel that they have enough fruits and vegetables. Spanish language speakers were also more likely to report eating adequate amounts of fruits and vegetables. And re respondents with um, children in the household were also more likely to eat, report eating enough produce, as well as those who received WIC. Um, those who worry about ability to pay bills was inversely related to produce consumption. So those who worry were less likely to think that they ate enough produce. Um, and we asked why they don't eat enough produce. And overwhelmingly, the reason was cost. We know that fresh produce is one of the most expensive things you can buy, and it is a challenge for people who are food insecure to access these resources. And again, this supports the idea that gardening can be a good resource for low-income Iowans. Um, to increase our access to fruits and vegetables. Then we asked a series of questions about gardening. Seven in ten were somewhat interested in gardening, although 10% were not interested at all. Um, and interest in gardening varied with education and eating enough fruits and vegetables. So people who, with more education were more likely to be interested, as well as people who thought they ate enough for fruits and vegetables were also more likely to be interested. Um, almost 80% of respondents know someone who gardens, and we know that that's a very important motivating factor is having knowledge of somebody else doing a behavior well, for you to do a behavior, so that was very important. And most people felt very, very positive about produce. People know that it's healthy, and they did feel positive about eating fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as growing their own food. Um, over half would like to learn more about gardening. And looking at gardening practice, many people um, garden in many different ways. 
use their yard and 14% use a container. And we really felt like container gardening may be a missed opportunity among this population because most low resource islands may live in housing without access to a yard or they may um, move frequently, which would be a barrier to creating a home garden within a yard. So we really did try to focus on increasing the number of people who um, participated in container gardening within our campaign. Six in 10 respondents either currently grow fruits and vegetables or have in the past. And people who do garden um, were more likely to eat a diet consisting of more fruits and vegetables, um, to own their own home, and to inter interestingly, um, not have any kids in the household. We were kind of surprised by that one. Um, gardening practice was not related to, wor to worrying about our ability to pay bills accessing food at a food pantry, language spoken, or living in an urban or rural area, which we thought was also interesting. When we asked why people garden, the number one reason was to save money. The number two reason was to have healthy food. So we really capitalized on these two messages within the campaign. The most common reasons for not gardening were lack of space, lack of time, health, lack of money, and other external circumstances. So again, we tried to, within the campaign to create messages that showed that these are not really barriers and that they can be easily overcome. Finally, we looked at gardeners. And um, we asked people first why they garden. Most people said for personal enjoyment, health, and better tasting food as well as 33% listed food to share or donate as a very important reason as to why they garden. And 27% actually donated to a food assistance program. However, many gardeners had never even thought of produce donation. As one said, it's a great idea, and this survey actually brought this option to my attention. Three out of four gardeners said that they would plant more if there were a food assistance program to accept produce donations within their community. So again, this shows a lack of knowledge that most communities do have some sort of food assistance program that does accept produce donations. Um, and then we asked what would help them to donate, and the top reason was convenience. Um, incentives such as recognition, coupons, tax incentives, et cetera, were not necessarily seen as a reason to encourage people to donate. Um, it really was overwhelmingly convenient. So working with food pantries to increase that convenience factor we saw was an important issue within this campaign. There was also a lack of knowledge, again, about um, where to donate produce and how to donate produce. Almost two-thirds of respondents didn't know if there was a local food assistance program that will accept donations within their community. So in general, there really was this lack of knowledge about produce donation. There was even less knowledge about plant and seed donation. So that was another issue that we saw as um, something to increase awareness of. But in general, gardeners were positive about produce donation but lacked knowledge of donation options within their community. So once we pulled all of the data together, the key insights that we really capitalized on were that partners were excited about gardening but lacked resources. Food pantries wanted more produce to support healthy eating messages and because families wanted it. Low resource islands faced economic challenges to accessing healthy food. They had some interest in gardening but saw many barriers to it. And gardeners didn't know that they could don donate produce to their local food pantries, but were very positive about the idea. So based on these insights, we created a campaign strategy that um, was fun and empowering, and we wanted to um, encourage people to donate and empower them, or excuse me, to garden and empower them that they could garden, that they didn't need a lot of space or time or money. We also wanted to inform gardeners that donation was wanted and needed at their local food banks and that we wanted to help them set a goal for themselves to donate. With messaging toward low resource islands, we didn't try to specifically target low resource people within the messaging. We wanted to make the messaging broad to apply to everyone and then we used various channels to specifically target populations. So the campaign itself never uses the term low resource or food insecure 
or anything like that. With gardeners, we wanted to present the idea of donation and then follow up with encouragement. One of the key themes within this campaign was partnerships. Everything that we did within Cultivate Iowa was built around partnerships, including our messaging creation. We partnered with the American Advertising Federation of Des Moines, which is a nonprofit um, professional group of advertisers within the city. And they took this campaign on as their annual um, project that they do. So we pulled together project managers, designers, copywriters, web design, and marketing, marketing strategists from various agencies throughout the city. And um, we were able to build on lots of different resources that we otherwise would not have been able to uh, with our budget. We worked with this team to develop the campaign concept and strategy over about five months. And the team also worked with local media companies to get donations for the campaign as well, which included billboards, airtime, printing, promotional items, etc. So with our initial investment, we were able to capitalize on partnerships that they had as well to increase the reach and impact of our campaign. And through all of this work, we developed the Cultivate Iowa campaign. Um, it has two taglines, plant grow save and plant grow share. The campaign was designed to be simple, graphic, and have a consistent feel across all materials. And the main goal was really to point people to the website where we posted many more resources than the resources that were created through messaging. On April 19th of 2013, we held a fog gathering where we launched the campaign and where partners were given starter kits of materials so they could then take our materials to their communities and use them in whatever way they felt was appropriate within their own organizations. We really started with a wide variety of resources because we wanted to see what worked and what didn't, and because the Food Access and Health Work Group pulled together such diverse resources and partners that we didn't want to um, confine anybody in the way that they would use the materials. All of these materials are posted on our website, which is cultivateiowa.org, under the Resources tab if you'd like to download or look at them further. The backbone of the campaign was an, a brochure and postcard. The brochure was to encourage gardening, and the postcard is two-sided that has both the plant grow share and plant go, grow safe messages, and they're available in both English and Spanish. We also developed five posters in both English and Spanish as well as an email, Facebook, and Twitter campaign that helped to support the first season. Um, currently, we have over 500 likes on Facebook, and this was used to encourage um, donation as well as to reach out to our partners and um, provide them with resources and messages as well. Like I said, we pointed people to the website, which had more information about how to start a container garden, where to donate, news and events, as well as where to, uh, the ability to download all of our resources. We also had a pledge to donate section of our website where gardeners could pledge, and then we used an email campaign to follow up with them and ensure that they did help um, donate to their local pantries. We also had billboards that um, targeted both low resource islands and gardeners and newspaper ads. Other campaign activities included radio and TV ads, an ISU Extension and Outreach Safe Produce Handling Guide, ampleharvest.org promotion. Ample Harvest is an organization that basically is a dating service between gardeners and food banks and food pantries. So a gardener can go on and enter their zip code and find all of the information about food banks and pantries that accept fresh produce within their area. So we really try to encourage gardeners to go to the organization ampleharvest.org, as well as our partners that were food banks and pantries to register there, so all the information is in one spot. We also held webinars and quarterly gatherings to support the campaign and keep our partners encouraged and using the materials. We had promotional items, and we had seed distribution. Seed Savers Exchange donated vegetable seeds for distribution so we could help our partners encourage gardening through gardening resources. We provided a $30,000 investment with AAF um, to develop all of these materi materials. And then 
services and products were donated through their partnerships. And like I said, this couldn't have happened without partnerships, and we really felt like that was a key lesson learned from all of this, is that both traditional and non-traditional partnerships were essential to um, the success of this campaign. So what did we get out of our $30,000 investment? With all of the donated materials, we got an almost $1.5 million campaign. So again, the partnerships were key. We had $50,000 in donated time, um, over a million dollars in donated media, $15,000 in donated seeds, um, and $5,000 in donated production. So we had an almost 50 times return on our initial investment. And it helped us to have a very broad reach throughout the state. And like I said, um, social marketing is based on evaluation. So once we had the initial campaign implementation where we provided all of these resources to our partners and they kind of hit the ground running with them, we wanted to find out what worked, what didn't work, and what kind of impact we had. So we, again, we reached out to SOG partners to see how they used the materials and what opportunities they saw for the next season. We reached out to Remote Resource Iowans to gauge their exposure to the campaign as well as their current gardening practices and food gardeners to also see their exposure as well as their produce donation practices. With our partners, 82% use Cultivate Iowa materials and they really use them in a very broad range of ways. Um, they also spent money on the campaign and printed their own brochures, purchased seeds, purchased potting materials, purchased lots of other supporting materials to implement this campaign. Um, the picture on this slide shows what the Des Moines Public Library did. They created um, kiosks within their libraries that had the Cultivate Iowa materials as well as donated seeds. And then they also put books about gardening and other resources there um, throughout the summer. Our partners felt that the most effective materials were the posters, the postcards, the brochures, the seeds, and the social media. The least used materials were, not surprisingly, the ones that they would have had to spend money on. So within the first season, we did have a lot of the ad time donated, but in the future when that donation wasn't available, um, these materials really weren't used all that much. Other recommendations for materials included a Pinterest page, local infrastructure building materials, so how to create connections within organizations, among organizations within their communities, um, table tents, and potting materials. And in the second season of the campaign, the 2014 campaign, we did listen to our partners and we developed a local infrastructure building guide, so how to create ne networks within their communities and with um, case studies of how that had been done in the past. And we partnered with gardening businesses to um, access resources for potting materials within communities. And we found that all of our materials were used in a very diverse way. There was a diversity of audience that was targeted, including clients, community leaders, other organizations, the general community. So all of our different partners used their materials in very, very different ways, which is what we thought would happen and what we wanted to happen. Among food gardeners, 70% were somewhat or extremely likely to recommend Cultivate Iowa as a resource. And we had a 100% increase in people who donated produce after the initial campaign. So they had about 35% had in the past and almost 70% had this year. So we really saw an effective impact of the Cultivate Iowa campaign among gardeners and we were so excited about that. And this just shows a lot of different um, ways that people engaged with the Cultivate Iowa campaign. Food gardeners thought Cultivate Iowa was, um, had useful information, was easy to understand, and had a high quality look. Most information was consumed through digital media by gardeners, so through the website, email, and social media. Among low resource Iowans, those who saw Cultivate Iowa were more likely to refer to Cultivate Iowa, to re recommend it to others, to have planted a garden this year, and then also to plan to plant a garden. We know that you need to see messaging many times before you take action, and asking people to start a garden is a pretty big ask. So we felt like it was a success that people thought about gardening through our messaging. Um, low resource Iowans saw the campaign through posters, TV, radio, and through service provider offices, so really more of the print media. 
and they felt like it, the campaign provided information that wasn't seen elsewhere. So we were really excited also that this was a unique campaign um, and that it wasn't replicating things that they were already seeing. Low Resource Islands who did garden thought that they saved money by planting a garden and they thought that their household ate more produce by planting a garden. So these were the two key messages that we wanted to in encourage and we did see that within our evaluation. Um, unfortunately, only half who accessed the food pantry received fresh produce through this resource. So really there is still a need to increase produce donation and increase food pantries access to fresh produce. As we saw, this, the first initial season in 2013 really made the first steps and then the following seasons can, we hope to capitalize on those first steps and really encourage behavior change as well as encouraging access to resources through food pantries. So through the initial evaluation, we saw a diversity of resources used by partners. So our um, concept of really creating a very diverse menu of materials and allowing our partners to pick and choose, I think was very successful based on the diversity of the membership of BOG. Um, digital media was very successful in targeting gardeners and print media was more successful to targeting low resource islands. Um, and community partnerships were really needed to reinforce messaging. So partnerships among gardeners and food pantries, low resource islands and food pantries, gardeners and low resource islands, lots of different resources within communities needed to be leveraged. So what are our next steps? Um, as with any project, sustainability and partnerships are kind of the key issues that we're looking at, both at the state and local level. So how can FOG facilitate sustainability of the campaign as well as partnerships, and how can it be facilitated at the local level within communities? And we focus communication with FOG partners to encourage continued use of these materials and are attempting to get a deeper reach with low resource islands and gardeners. Uh, we also changed our launch date. If you remember on the um, previous slides, we launched the first campaign on August or April 19th, which a lot of our partners said was too late to encourage people to start gardening. You already had to have your garden kind of in the ground by that point. Um, so we moved our launch up to February and March to make sure that there was ample time to encourage gardening messaging with low resource islands. So that's kind of a basic overview of the Cultivate Iowa campaign. We plan to continue um, making these resources available to our partners um, and letting them use them however they see fit. Um, we also are open to creating new resources as our partners um, request them and creating resources that can be used in an infrastructure building and sustainability um, way so that our partners can really take this campaign and run with it and make it useful within their own communities. We as, at FOG really see ourselves as a facilitator. So we want to be able to provide resources and then our partners can use them in whatever way they see fit. Um, so thank you very much for this time and I really appreciate the opportunity to present this campaign to you. Are there any questions or comments at this time? Betsy, this is Phil, mm -hmm. and uh, it lo looks like we have um, one person on. So if you if you you can type uh, questions into the chat box. Um, I have a couple questions for you. Um, sure. So, how much of and, and maybe you and maybe you said this again, and I, and I missed it, but how much of the food access and health working groups overall energy or work does this campaign account for? Is it the entirety of what that group is doing, or? Um, in 13, it really was the kind of very this um, group. We really encourage them to embrace it, use it, and we spent a lot of our um, time and resources to promoting this campaign. After we got the initial campaign launched, and I think our partners kind of took it on as their own within their own communities, we steps back on this campaign. We still provide resources to our partners. We still make the resources available and we're still um, helping them to develop things that they need within their communities that are branded with the Cultivate Iowa theme. However, after that first 
season, we've um, kind of moved on to other projects and are letting the Cultivate Iowa campaign roll within the, at the local level um, and it's been less promotion at the state level. And, and can you remind me too, at what, how long had the, that working group been together before you all started this campaign? I mean, was it kind of like the, the piece that got everybody going and, and working together or, or where did, how does that, can you talk about that? Working group started in 2010 or 2011. So it's been going on for a couple of years before we did this campaign. This campaign really dealt with um, instrumental and the food access and health working group and expanding um, people's awareness of it. Um, prior to the launch of the campaign, we probably had about 150 partners that were engaged within the food access and health work group. After the launch of the campaign, we had about 500 partners. So it really increased our visibility and it really kind of took the organization to that next level where we are um, partnering with major organizations throughout the state and are really a key um, group within this area. So it took a couple of years to get the um, group rolling and to kind of get those really key partners that are very active in the organization to the table and um, making sure that kind of the, the structure of the organization was there before we launched the game, but it did expand the organization. Um, I don't know that I have any more questions, and uh, it looks like uh, we will not get any more questions from the participants. So um, thank you so much for, for taking the time to, to present this, and uh, um, I think like Jeannie said, uh, this will be a great resource for people on the web to um, text us. So, um, and again, if you are listening to this webinar, um, after the fact, you can find more webinars um, like this at AppalachianFoodJetProject.org. And um, I think um, at the Iowa Food Systems Council.org, you can also um, find a wealth of additional information, too. Uh, Betsy, is there anything else you'd like to add to, to wrap it up? Thanks for this opportunity. And again, um, CultivateIowa.org, all of our people are there. Um, and can email us at info at .org if you have any additional any more information about this, as well as the ability to hire after the implement the initial implementation. Great. Thank you, Betsy. And one additional reminder is we actually have um, kind of a weird situation where we're actually having another webinar next um, Tuesday with Anthony Flacavento from rural scale, he's presenting on a local foods cost calculator that he has um, developed. So go to the Appalachian Feature Project website for more information, um, and hopefully we'll see you all there. So thank you very much again, Betsy, and uh, have a good day.